Hello students, in this video we are going to learn about RTL design process. In our previous video, we saw the introduction of the unit named RTL design. Here we will see what are the various processes that is there or available in your RTL design. You know that your RTL design is a level of abstraction. So what are the various levels of abstraction of the design? In our Y chart, in our previous diagram, we have seen a transistor level design and then it will move up towards the logic level design and it will end at register transfer level. I guess you all remember that diagram. So what is the transistor level design? It is used or it is using a certain transistors and those transistors are being connected into circuits to build gates or other components and that is called as a transistor level design. So in that you will be using transistors for building your certain components or your circuits. Moving up in that diagram, you will be proceeding with the logic level. So what is the logic level? You will be designing the combinational or a sequential circuits that is involving the circuits whose building blocks are primarily logic gates. Means I will be having certain circuits and those circuits will be having gates, not the transistors. Okay, using gates I will be having other circuits. That is called logic design or logic level design. So the topmost level which is the register transfer level. So it is used for designing processes. So designing processes involves circuits. So what is that processor? In our previous video, what we have seen, data path, a controller combined together, it will be ending at a processor. Don't panic, okay? So now the designing the processors which involves circuits whose building blocks are registers and other data path components and involves transferring the data from your register through other data path components. What is it like adders and back again to the register. So the registers are used for transferring your data, okay, to and fro from the register. So such a design is called as register transfer level design or RTL design. So I'm going to use my register for transferring the data to and fro from the data or from the register. So those are used for building big, big processes. And now this RTL design process will be having, it is a method of creating custom processes that you all accept. Now what is the first step towards this RTL level design? The first step towards that is, I must capture the behavior of my processor. What actually is the specification? Okay, in simple words I can say, what actually my processor must do. So I have to capture the behavior by using high level state machine, okay? So it is to be introduced, but we have seen previously in our previous unit that high level state machines are different from our normal finite state machine. It will be having multiple data inputs for processing your data and we will be having certain local registers also, okay? So that the high level state machine will be capturing a behavior of my processor. So that is the first step. And the remaining steps is going to convert from the behavior into your circuit. So if I want to design a processor, the first step I need to know is I must know how to capture my behavior using the high level state machine. Nothing but a state diagram we have to write, but the diagram will be having certain multiple data inputs and outputs. It is not that it will be single bit data. So now, we'll be understanding what is a single bit data, what is a multiple data, when we see with an example uh, through some case study. So as of now, this RTL design is used for creating some custom processors. And the first step of my design is used for capturing the behavior from the high level state machine. And the remaining steps will take us into the particular circuit. So capture the behavior and convert to the circuit. So uh, in brief, I have given you the RTL design method. This is what I have given in the introduction video regarding the RTL design process. 
So what I said that you must have a data path and you must have a controller. Combine the data path and the controller. That is nothing but your RTL design, which is nothing but a processor. So now, what will be there inside your controller? We will be having a finite state machine and there will be a state register and you'll be having a combinational logic, okay? And inside your data path, you'll be having certain adders or what operation that has been carried out. When I'm capturing the behavior from the model or from the finite state machine or the high level state machine i will be knowing what are the various data path components i need to include inside my data path so first thing is first you must have a data path you must have a controller and data path will be having some data inputs as well as the data outputs and the same way the data path will connect with the controller by using data path control inputs as well as the output outputs also and there will be certain external control inputs and external control outputs. Okay, the controller will also be having inputs. Data path will be also having inputs. The controller will be having outputs in the same way. Data path will also have the outputs and the both connect with each other by using certain control inputs. Okay, now. So this all four units or four steps will clearly help you to understand what actually is the unit is on about. So in this unit, you will be learning only the four steps for designing different, different processes. So what is the first step? Thing is, you have to capture the behavior. What is the capturing the behavior? How we are going to capture the behavior? Just like that, I can go and capture. So with the help of a finite or high level state machine, it's not or it is only capture a high level state machine. So what is this high level state machine? will be describing our system's behavior in a state machine and that state machine will be having states as well as transition and it is called as a finite i mean high level just because the transition condition or the state actions or the events are more than just the boolean operation on bit inputs and outputs see uh, first thing is you have to capture a state machine and that is a high level state machine. You know a state machine will be having states and there will be a transition from present state to the next state. And this is high level state machine and so you must make sure that the transition condition or the state events will be happening not just because certain bit inputs, okay? Not just like a finite state machine. Finite state machine is like if I'm having a single bit data or a single bit input, I may move to the next state. Whereas in this state machine, we will not move to the next state. When I get a single bit data, you will be processing with the multiple bits. And that is what I'm saying that it is a high level state machine. And next is I will be creating a data path. Means the second step is create a data path to carry out the data operation of the high level state machine. So to carry out the what are the operations that I need to do or that is seen in the high level state machine. I may say that the high level state machine is going to perform an addition operation. So I need to have an adder in my data path. So based on the high level state machine or based on the operations that has been carried out in a state machine, I have to create the data path. After that, what I need to do, I have to connect the data path to a controller. So connect the data path to a controller block so connect external boolean inputs and outputs to the controller block means we will be said that previously boolean inputs and outputs are nothing but it will be there in your fsm if you remember that in our previous video we have seen the controller will be having i just said that controller will be having an fsm right so now we are going to connect all our external inputs and outputs to the controller block at the same time i'm going to control or connect the controller block to the data path also see here external control inputs i'll be connecting the external control inputs to the controller at the same time i'm going to connect my controller to the data path so first thing is first i have to create the data path first step is capture the behavior by using the state machine and then you can based on the operations that has been carried out you can connect or create a data path and then you can start with the controller by connecting the controller with the data path and also connect the external control inputs and then you have to derive the controller's FSM. That is what I said. The controller, you just assume that the controller will be having an FSM also. It is not high level state machine, it is finite state machine. So I have to convert the high level state machine 
to a finite state machine for the controller by because my controller is going to accept single inputs whereas your high level state machine is multiple inputs so for your controller to accept the single inputs or the single bit data i must convert the high level state machine into a finite state machine for the controller so by replacing the data operation with setting and reading of controlling signals to and fro from the data path it is nothing but you are going to convert the high level state machine into a finite state machine so that my controller can accept the boolean inputs that's it it is given now first step so rtl designs process is nothing but there are four step the first step is draw the high level state machine in simple terms i am explaining you first whenever a question is being given start with the high level state machine move on to the creation of data path and then create the data path to a controller make sure that you know how to convert the high level state machine into a finite state machine so when you connect both you will be ending up at a processor and that will be completing my custom processor so this is all about the rtl design process so i hope you understood the video in our next video we shall see an example of a custom processor thank you